back to the channel. I'm ODIJ and we are locked in. This is the season premiere for Power Book 3, Raising Canaan Season 2. You know everyone jokes around when power isn't on, they cancel their stars membership. Well, it's time to bring it back because this is episode one. Kanan is going back to New York City, people. Now, if you remember, the last thing that happened, Kanan left. He shot Detective Malcolm. Symphony drove him off. So we're picking up a couple of months later for when Kane and left. Now, before we jump into it and break down the show, if you like power content, live after show discussions, daily breakdowns, and different theories and predictions, hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and also follow me on Instagram, M O E D O T J. Now, I know you don't want to hear too much talking because the season is back. So let's jump into it. This is episode one of season two, Raising Kanan. You the editor, this stone, Kanan, and it's waiting for you, if you want it. Young man Kanan is out on the beach just enjoying the last breath of fresh air before Rock takes him back to the concrete jungle of New York City. Now, Rock comes out here, and she's excited. She hasn't seen her son in a while. Now, Kanan is a young boy. He's a young man growing, and he's already been caught a body and an attempted body. There's a lot going on through this man's mind. Now, Rock is out here joking around, talking about an old boyfriend that she had. Kanan isn't interested in hearing any of that. All in all, he still misses his mother. It's just a lot weighing in on him. Think about it. If you went through all of this stuff at 15, how would you handle it? Detective Malcolm Howard is now being released from the hospital. You got to remember, he got shot in the chest. He's also going through cancer, but he had a ring on his finger and he's telling the nurse, hey, I'm not leaving here until I get my ring. She's saying, well, maybe your family took it. And what does he emphasize on? I don't have any family. You can say this is good cop, bad cop here. Detective Burt works directly with Detective Malcolm. She would be the good one. She's gonna work, she's gonna dig, and she's talking to the doctor. And what the doctor is trying to explain to her is, Detective Malcolm, he is leaving this hospital on remission. He has cancer in his blood, and his two lungs are still intact. He's basically a hero. You know what I'm saying? This is a miracle. This is the closest this, this hospital's ever been to anything like this. And you can sense that Detective Burke is still kind of like, uh, is he really? When you go stay with your relatives, your uncle, your auntie, your cousins, or your siblings, and Kanan, he actually likes Virginia a little bit more than he does in New York. That's because up in New York, that pressure's weighing in on him. That body, that attempted body, a cop. Yeah, if I could just stay down here and be a kid, that's something more valuable to Kanan than actually being in the game. Meanwhile, upstairs, Rock is talking to Auntie saying, I can't wait to get Kanan back. I was reminiscing about an old boyfriend. Hmm, the good times. But what Auntie is saying is let Kanan stay in school down here. I can enroll him and this will give him better opportunity. Basically, the Fresh Prince of VA. Get him out of New York and let him come down here. Rock ain't having that. Wherever she goes, Kanan has to be there. Our first time seeing our man Lulu and he's here with Jessica. Jessica is famous as older sister slash manager. Now she's just yapping all talking about why you ain't pushing famous? Why you ain't giving famous no beats? I'm his manager. I got him on the radio one time. Lulu is a businessman. This music isn't making any money. So he needs to make sure that famous is putting in the same amount of work that he is and actually writing lyrics. You write some lyrics, then I get you the beats. He doesn't want to be giving anyone a handout. It's basically what Lulu is saying here. Lulu casually tells Jessica, you're Famous's manager. It's your job to worry about his career. I fund it. I go get beats and I bring beats. I don't care about Famous's career. That's not what I do. She asks, do you want to know why we always argue? He says no and pulls off on her. Right after leaving there, he pulls up to a stoplight. Some girl pulls up and she's singing her tail off. We looking over. He trying to get her attention, but the music is too loud. She pulls off. He cuts her off in the Acra. She got a whole thing of mace talking about, I'll spray you. He's saying, whoa, 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 Lulu, Lulu here. You heard of Bulletproof Records? I'd like to sign you because that voice sound amazing. And also we just heard Famous ain't writing no lyrics. We got to make some money somehow. She does take the card and Lulu will be expecting to hear from you. First off, RIP to Nicole. She didn't have to smoke that crack rock, but she did it. RIP. Jukebox is out here paying her respect because if you remember, the parents didn't want her around after it had happened. Even though Juke didn't do it, she took it out of the bag herself. But she does leave her a little mixtape. It hurts so much. Damn. On the ride back to New York from Virginia, Kanan is talking to Rock and he's basically saying, I'm scared. What if they still looking for me? What if the cop sees me from around the way? Now, we know Detective Malcolm just got out. 
they acting like he can't remember anything. So Rock is saying, oh, the cop got shot. He's going to get out. He doesn't remember anything. So you'll be good. A couple of months have passed. You're good. It's not a year. A couple of months have passed. You'll be all right. Come on back. Kanan is fearful right now. Uncle Marvin, one of my favorite characters on the show. Now, he's sitting outside of the courthouse and he does have a glizzy in his hand. This is Uncle Marvin. You remember last season, he had got jammed up. Tony was doing some talking. He had got a little possession charge. Well, this season, Tony is gone, so the police have no case. But he has a possession charge. His lawyers are telling him, we have two options. Either you do community service or anger management courses. Of course, Marvin ain't about to be out in that hot sun picking up no trash. He said, give me the anger management courses because the lawyer said, I'll have it set up where all you got to do is sign in and leave. Detective Burke takes Malcolm home. And when he gets there, there's a whole bunch of mail behind the door. Three months worth of bills. They're just going to be mad at me because I wouldn't pay it. When they go in there, she's saying we need to open up some windows, get some light in here. But on the desk inside of the room where she opened up the window, there's a defendant file named Kanan Stark. Detective Burke takes Malcolm to his house, and when he opens up the door, there's piles of mail behind the door. Three months worth of bills. They would just be mad at me because that's not getting paid. Now, she's saying we need to bring in some light because it was dark in there. In the room that she goes in on the table, there is a file, and it says defendant Kanan Stark on it, arrest number, and a charge. She gets curious because she asked him last season, what is the connection with you and that family? He just got out of the hospital. He's not really trying to talk to anybody or go do anything. He literally got out maybe an hour ago. And Detective Burke says, do you want to go out and eat? He's saying, no, nah, I'm going to sit at the house. I'm going to clean up a little bit. And I'm going to live my life the right way this time. And she's just thinking about it. She's seen the, the case file. So she's wondering, is he hiding anything? When she leaves, he makes sure she leaves. And he's looking out the window. New York, New York. They finally arrive, and while they're riding around, Kanan is looking at it, thinking this ain't like Virginia. Virginia was quiet. Virginia was peaceful. You got cop cars. You look over on the corner. You got Warrell, that's Unique's boy. He getting hemmed up. It's crazy out here. Rocked and upgraded. You remember they started off with two apartments, top floor and the floor up under it. So if they got raided, they could drop the drugs through. Well, now they own the whole projects. It's kind of like the Carter on New Jack City. They walking through, they got lookouts on the roof. When they get on the elevator, no one else gets on with them. And Kanan is thinking, Ma, why didn't they get on? She says, shoot, you got to ask them. Rock is really taking over. She has the whole floor. She takes care of the tenants. In one of the rooms, you got a pregnant woman in there. Everybody's just, they beaming up in here. That's all I can say. And Kanan, he's in shock. He ain't seen it like this before. Kanan gets into the apartment. He sees Uncle Marvin. He sees our man Scrap. You know, he got that eye patch on. He got messed up last season. He's good to go now, people. Uncle Marvin talk about, man, you was one of them surfing dudes. I get out there. I show them how to surf. They said, Marvin, you don't know how to swim. He said, well, I got to know how to swim if I got a surfboard. Mr. Unique, he's been locked up. You remember, they set him up. They stole his jacket, gave it to Kanan. Kanan shot the cop. They took the jacket back, put it in the apartment. They came and arrested him. Well, he's getting released because he had an alibi. Now, this cop behind him, the CO, he's saying, man, you man, I shot that cop, but you're guilty or something. And Unique says something that I, it really, it hit deep. We're all guilty of something. I'm just not guilty of shooting that cop. <laughs> Laverne, a.k.a. Jukebox, she's in the room vibing out, listening to music, organizing a few things. But when she looks in the closet, she sees a shoebox. And in that shoebox, there's some old pictures. And y'all can all relate to this. We got those shoeboxes with pictures. Some were up under the bed. Some of them are in the linen closet. But we have them. And she's looking. And then she sees a picture from 1975 that says Kenya and Laverne on it. And on the front, it's a picture of her and her mother. This is the new Carter, the baby Carter. They're doing $75,000 a day in sales. Rock has really upscaled this project since we last seen it when it was just two rooms. Scrappy, he goes around, he talks to the people and they're getting complaints that they're too noisy upstairs and the stairwell smell like pee. Uncle Marvel says stairwells always smell like pee from the time that they made these buildings. But Rock says, we're gonna take care of the people. Give everybody more money, because as long as you're taking care of them, they won't say anything, and we'll bop the stairwells two times a day with some air freshener. She's trying to make it at least somewhat livable in here so they can continue to watch over them so they can continue to make their money. 
Rock is making sure everything is running smoothly, and you would too if you were selling $75,000 a day. Now, she wants to make sure everything is good. They have lookouts. The only problem is the block might get hot. We've seen Warrell and them getting arrested up the street. Now, she doesn't want any of that nowhere near their projects. Then we talk about our man Scrappy, and he has a weakness, and that weakness is he likes to shoot dice. He likes to gamble a little bit. And when I mean a little bit, I mean a lot. He once made a bet with Uncle Marvin if there were 50 fries in a fry container. He bet the over and it was 51 of them in there, $500. When I told you he bets a little bit, I told you I meant a lot. We seen what Lulu was out doing this morning. He was talking to Jessica. He was recruiting artists. Well, he showed up to this meeting a little late. And right now, everyone's talking about they want to go at it. They want to get Roel out here. They want to put their names and their feet in the street and make it known that ain't no one going to mess with them. Rocket said, nope, we're going to lay low. Guns on safety. And Lulu, show up on time. Kanan finally sees Jukebox. They're like brother and sister. They look out for each other. They're going to make sure each other is straight. Kanan gets back. She's in here writing still. And he's just talking about how Virginia was different. And it was good to be away from New York City. And he got to clear his mind. That fresh air do it to you. That ocean. Yeah, that breeze. Hmm. It's totally different than that New York air. And he's saying, man, I'm looking at this life and I don't think that this is enough. Do I really want to be in the streets like this? That's because he experienced a regular life out there in Virginia. This scene here did make me laugh. It's just a family moment. That's how I am with my nephews. We clown each other. We clown my brother. Yeah. So y'all know how it is when you're around family. Now, Lulu did get Marvin. Then Marvin, he went a little bit too far and started getting on Kane and talking about you were stung by a jellyfish and you were crying. You making the family look bad. When you leave this house, you represent us. Kane is like, damn, I wasn't crying though. <laughs> Jukebox comes downstairs because she was smelling that food and that stomach was up there rumbling. Her and Marvin, they haven't spoke since the last time we seen him in the scene together where he was choking her out because he was breaking everything that he had and he didn't understand her. Now he's trying to catch up. She's being short. One word with him. She doesn't have anything to say. Marvin is trying, but he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have this kind of experience. He wasn't there. Let me find out Rock can cook. Now she's whipping up a welcome home dinner for Kanan. And she's letting him know we didn't have any of these family dinners without you. But everybody look at each other. We're family. We're blood. It's thicker than water. We may have our differences, but we all we got. And we need to make the best of that. And that's some real stuff. And everyone's kind of down because they all have their issues. No one's really on good terms right now. When you really think about it, except for Kanan and Jukebox. No one's really, I can go and talk to you about things. Famous is talking to his sister. And you heard Lulu say, he's lazy. He needs to write some rhymes. Ever since Lulu seen that he was smoking weed, he started getting lazy. Famous ain't writing nothing. His sister can only do so much. And now she's starting to see what Lulu was saying. You got to put in some work, Famous. And then Famous, he gets upset because he know he ain't putting in no work. The streets might need a body early. He starts talking about, I thought you sleeping with Lulu was going to make it easier for me. But it ain't. And then he walks off. Marvin's still trying to talk to Jukebox, asking her what classes are she taking. School isn't even started. She daps up Kanan and leaves. And we hear Lulu apologize. He apologizes for being late. He just didn't know that running on a studio would be as hard as it is or as much work as it is. And he's just saying, I'm going to be there next time. I'm going to do better. I'm going to change. She's saying, I heard that before. She's also trying to put him in the game, but he's turning it down. And she called the music business a hobby because it ain't making no money. So, you know, that hurt Lulu. That hurt him because this is what he wants to do. Anyone can notice that Marvin and Jukebox, they aren't on the same page. They aren't on good terms. Juke goes outside and she's smoking a cigarette and Kanan's saying, man, when'd you start smoking? And she's been through a lot just like he has. And we hear him saying when he went down to Virginia, he looked at things differently. That slower pace, that less having to look over your back, living up to the dope game standards. Yeah, it was different down there. Now he's saying he's he, he's basically trying to cry for help and say, hey, man, looking at that cop and shooting him, it hurts. And you even hear Jukebox say your mom was wrong for what she did. We all agree Rock was wrong for telling Kanan to go and do that. Whole time they out there talking, Famous shows up, but across the street, Malcolm Howard, and he's just watching and watching. He needs to get to Kanan. He needs to get to Kanan as soon as possible because he still needs that donor 
and he just wants to talk to his son. Rock has bigger plans than just running base. She wants to take over another building in the 40s. Now, the way she wants to do this, she wants to bring in Roel. So don't tell Scrappy. But Scrappy, he gets in trouble. Scrappy be gambling a little bit. And if she brings in Worrell, we know that he works for Unique. Unique should be getting out of jail pretty soon. So if we take all of his workers off the street and have them working with us, he won't have anything. They'll be making better money with Rock than Unique. So hopefully she can buy their loyalty. Now, Lulu doesn't want to do this. He'd rather work on his hobby, the music business. And he says, hey, let him have both. Mm -mm, Lulu, you still got to run the 40s. They told us Scrappy had a gambling problem for a reason. He in his mama basement. He can't turn down no cars game. He in there, big cigars. You know, they kicking it. Mama down here having a good time. It's kind of like Ray's boom, boom room. Only thing, Ray ain't there and ain't no one dressed up. Unfortunately, Scrappy wins and the police kick in the door. Detective Howard, a miracle. You heard the doctor. It's a miracle that he survived with cancer and got both of his lungs still intact. This guy decides, let me get up and go to the precinct in the middle of the night. Not me. I'm off. I'm not coming to work. I'm not coming to see none of y'all. I don't care what y'all doing at work. I'm at the house. He goes over there to talk to Bert. She's kind of getting some jokes back, saying, I was waiting for you guys to get done with your D measuring contest. You might need one of them little centimeter ones, you know, a little bitty wee wee. What she's doing is looking at his case file for his shooting. So that means she's going to have Kanan Stark's file also. That means she's going to be looking at everything. He notices that because he's seen that she may have potentially seen the folder at his house. So what he's doing is trying to pick her brain and see what she knows and tells her, do they know that you're working on this? You need to be very careful for it. We were just speaking on Unique and how we were going to take his people off the street. Well, he's inside and he's street brawling with some gentlemen that were whooping on a gentleman, telling them that he will be sucking everybody up when they get done with him. They bump into Unique and Unique. I don't know where these fighting skills came from, but he starts to whoop on everybody. He whoops on them so bad. The cops come and start to handcuff him and drag him out. And the guy that was getting jumped, he's like, I seen it all. When have the CEOs just listened to an inmate? He said, I seen it all. He was helping me. Thanks, man. <laughs> we have to go show our gratitude to our symphony. He drove this young man in the middle of the night from New York to Virginia. Didn't know didn't ask any questions took him down there now the bond between him and Kanan is getting very close we know that rock likes him she's not trying to lead on to being in any relationship or anything but you can tell that she likes especially what he's doing for Kanan, and she likes him you know it's a, a good looking guy and they're just here and they're joking around and he says Kanan, you owe me some cheetos bro you owe me some money in the studio it's the same old thing we hear her talking about i've been pushing my brother i'm the one that did that i got him on the radio one time Lulu said, until Famous starts writing, he ain't getting no beats. He ain't coming in the studio. We losing. And you hear Camacho saying, well, you are right. We didn't do too much promotion. But in Lou's case, I agree with Lou. We ain't trying to lose no money. So right now, Famous is not getting in the booth until he can write some lyrics. Let us hear something. Kanan goes to the restroom and the adults, they get to talk. Rock, Symphony. And he's saying exactly what I was mentioning earlier. He took this kid down there. He didn't ask any questions. He would do anything for Rock. And he's saying, he told me some things. He's scared. He'd be mad if I told you this, but this is Kanan's mom. He's not Kanan's dad. You know, he's just an outside, an outside person that he's talking to. Kanan is scared. And Rock says, I know my son. I know what he's capable of. All Symphony is saying, give Kanan a chance. That's all. This young man needs a chance. He doesn't need to be in this life. Whatever you got going on, Kanan needs to be away from it. And it would have probably been better for Kanan to stay in Virginia, especially since we know how he turned out in the original power. Anger management classes start today. Marvin thinks he can just go in here, grab a donut, sign in, and leave. Well, Renee is a the therapist, and she has other plans. She says, you either sit down and you complete this anger management class, or I call the courts and I let the judge know that you're violating your probation. And... You're going to go to jail. Marvin said, well, you you right about that. You right about that. Let me go ahead and sit on down here. Marvin is not trying to do any time in jail and he's not trying to do any community service. So he did the right thing. 
You remember the young lady Lulu pulled over, Zisa? Well, it's time for her to get in the booth. No one believed in her, but Lulu did. And we're about to see, she has a nice little voice on her. So Lulu, all he's hearing is dollar signs. Kanan is finally opening up with Rock when they get to the house and he's telling her, I don't think I'm built for this. I don't think I can protect you like I thought I could. Yeah, it's a big task out there. That's not your job. And Rock says, it's my job to protect you as your mother. And I failed, I did a bad job at that. But just know Kanan, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for you. So this is all that Kanan is hearing is, even though he shot a cop because his mama told him, he's out here, he's in the trap spot because his mama told him, this is what she's doing for you, Kanan. To him, all he's doing is having nightmares of him shooting a cop. It's bad out here for Kanan. Episode one, Unique is getting released and you hear Kanan narrating it saying, some people say when you go to jail, you only serve two days, the day you go in and the day you get out. That's because they haven't been to jail. Because when you're in there, you serve every single day. But when you get out, you gotta be that same person you were times 10. And look at Unique, he's gonna go get some revenge. The last thing we see is Rock meeting up with Detective Malcolm. We know that he's been following Kanan around since he got out and they're at Beasley. Yeah, we own the Beasley projects. And it looks like they're about to meet up and we can only wonder what she's gonna ask Malcolm, AKA Kanan Stark's father. All right, there you go, episode one of Raising Kanan. I will personally say I give it about a seven just because it was a little slow. We didn't get any action, but that's expected. They're trying to catch us up with all the characters and fill in everything that we were wondering at the end of last season. So overall, it's pretty good. If you like power content, make sure you tune in tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern for the live after show discussion for episode one. I'm Odi J. If you like this content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.